friends. Today we're reading Madeline and the Old House in Paris by John Bemelmans Marciano. In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. In another old house that stood next door lived the son of the Spanish ambassador. One afternoon at a quarter to five, a long black car pulled into the drive. Wondering who it could possibly be, Pepito and Madeline ran to see. It was Lord Cuckoo Face, the sometimes cruel and always nosy head of the school. He had come to make a surprise inspection. Nothing escaped his skills of detection, save a certain little mouse who also occupied the house. You can't be too careful with these old houses, full as they are of termites and louses. Then Lord Cuckoo Face came before a thoroughly unfamiliar door and asked Miss Clavel what it was for. Dear sir, it leads up to the attic, said Miss Clavel, her voice empathetic. A room that I believe is haunted. Rubbish, the Lord said, and completely undaunted, climbed to an attic that was hot and musty and filled with old chests that were really quite dusty. There are spiders, you see, but nary a ghost. But what's this, he said. Why, this is the most... Splendid telescope I've ever the pleasure of coming across. Oh, what a treasure. Cuckoo Face rubbed his hands greedily. And made off with it speedily. After that, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. In the middle of the night, Madeline said, Something is not right. She heard the sound of someone moaning, almost like a ghost was groaning. The girls all cried, look, a ghoul. But Madeline was not a fool. That's no goblin, she said. It's only a brat. The boy burst out laughing. Oh, that bad hat. But the moans went on. In fact, they got stronger. Not even Pepito could laugh any longer. Madeline went off investigating while the others, afraid, were hesitating. They crept up the stairs. Was it a mouse? A bat? Or something much scarier than any, uh, any of that? It was a ghost, he cried. Woo-hoo. The girls and Pepito cried, boo-hoo. But Madeline just said, poo-poo. The ghost broke down and started crying. Oh, this is even worse than dying. Madeline offered him a handkerchief to stem his flowing ghostly grief, but his tears fell right on through. Monsieur Ghost, please tell us, do. What is it that's troubling you? My name is Felix de la Morte, and I was born the scientific sort. Already by the age of seven, I had mastered the study of the stars in heaven. Proud I was and very glad to be the first boy admitted to the academy. Now comes the woeful part of my story. I built this house as an observatory to witness a comet that only nears the earth every 2,021 years. Just as my comet moved into view, I leapt for joy. What is sad but true is that I forgot I was sitting on a roof. And my life was over just like that. Poof. I have haunted this house for years without cease awaiting the comment so I may rest in peace. Tomorrow night it finally returns, you see. But alas, 
My telescope has been stolen from me. Madeline said, How unfair, how unjust. We will get it back for you, we must. Using a wig, these clothes, and even dust. The plan began the very next night when Miss Clavel turned out the light. Madeline said, the coast is clear, and gave Pepita the sign to near. Two girls had a mirror steady, while the rest helped to get the costumes ready. They used a jacket and a scarf of lace, and a piled up wig and powdered face, plus a pair of breeches col colored blue, and a buckled high-heeled shoe or two. They biked to a boat that was waiting below, and rode their way to the chateau. Awake, awake, Lord Cuckoo Face, and save yourself from foul disgrace. You've crossed a line that's awfully fine by taking what is rightly mine. The telescope that now I lack, I order you to give me back. Poor Cuckoo Face, his jaw gone slack, and halfway to a heart attack, cried, have mercy on a poor old fool, I was only borrowing it from school. It's by the window, don't you see? Just take it, please, and leave me be. The children seized their prize, and then... rode their way home up the CN. Felix was waiting, anxious and glum. Wouldn't the children ever come? The door swung open to reveal to his joy the safe return of his best-loved toy. Felix thanked them with all his heart, and now begins our final part. While the rest of the world was soundly sleeping, a girl and a boy and a ghost were peeping at a rare and brilliant sight, a comet streaking through the night.